Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hall of Fame College Football. I'm your host, Jason Watkins. And if you love college football, you're definitely in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of Hall of Fame College Football. Doesn't look like we have a ton of folks in here yet, but first thing I want to do is, hey, we got a special guest in here tonight. Coach will be along shortly. And uh, hey, we got super special guests in here tonight. Former Oklahoma Sooner, defensive tackle. He played at a time where he had to carve out time against Tommy Harris and Gerald McCoy, of all people, there on that D line. One of our friends of the show, my favorite guest, Mr. Stephen Coleman. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Hey, man. It's Texas Hate Week. We could not not have you on this week, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I cannot stand Texas. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things I was going to ask you. Just how much do you hate Burn Orange? Oh, <laughs> uh, 120%. I, I just can't stand the color, nothing. The horns, yeah. be, Bevo, anything about Texas Longhorns, I can't stand That's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, we've been... We've been definitely uh, taking a lot of uh, shots at, at Bevo and the Horns, and and uh, you know they're uh, awful lot of hype centered around these guys this year. You know they come in, they go on the road, beat an Alabama team that uh, I'm not sure they're great. You know I think I think little brother might beat them tomorrow. So uh, sure. you know we'll see what happens. But you know good for them that they got it. But I think if anything else, I mean does it to me? I feel like this puts a lot of pressure on them. What do you think? Oh, most certainly. Uh, they were the number three in the country. <clears throat> Everybody talking about them. Texas is back, and they're playing great on defense, playing great on offense, and OU doesn't have a chance, and yeah. that's where <laughs> things can go turn around. So they better be on their feet. They better be ready tomorrow. That's all I know. Hey, man, that's uh, that's how I feel about it, too. You know, it's uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Oki Light is actually going to – they're putting it on K-State. Hey, that that would just probably point to – more than likely another matchup, whatever happens tomorrow, uh, in the Big 12 championship game between Oklahoma and Texas if, if K-State's to lose this one. That's a weird loss that they do it because Oki Light is just flat trash, uh, you know, no good at all. And so it's weird to me that that would even happen. But, of course, playing in Stillwater, you know, they, they might have they put something in their drinks or something. Who knows? Well, but, Stillwater, that's a, that's a tough place to play in. Trust me. I do not They're like right on top of you, right? They're right <laughs> yes. on top of you, too, the whole time. Oh, they know everything about you. They call you every name in the book. Oh, oh man, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, let's, so let's just uh, – obviously, you played in a few of these things yourself, you know, being a Sooner. Now, this, of course, of course, for people that don't know, Stephen Coleman it was uh, – he played for a coach at Dallas Skyline before going on to play for the Sooners there. What what were the years you played again? It was like 02 to 05? Oh, oh, 03 to, oh, 03 to 07. 0307, 0307. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, again, you had to kind of – you played for Coach Venables. Um, I know that – you know, what? Oh, tell, tell us how you guys did in the Red River first before you – you know, before we get into the rest of it. Uh, when I was there, we were three and two. So, my okay. first year there – that was my red shirt year. That's when we blew uh, them out like 63 to 14, I think. Hey. And my – then my other freshman year, it was 12 Uh The next year, I can't remember. Did we win or lose that one? No, we won that one. I forgot the score was. Then my junior year, uh, we lost. And my senior year, we won. <clears throat> mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, man, he was a beast, bro. It's, uh, you know, and it's, it's funny how Coach will tell you the story whenever he gets in here. I think he should be here any minute now. Um, but, uh, you know, he found him there in the hallway, walking down the hallway in Skyline and pulled his ass into the into the line. Come on, you need to come play football, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, pretty, that's pretty much what happened because I wasn't planning on playing football at all. And he pulled me out the hallway, and I mean, the rest is history. <laughs> Man, what a deal, right? You know, and uh, it's funny how we talk a lot about you know, and now that now that you're a coach and you know this, but it's like coaches really have a lot of uh, of an effect on you. You know, good coaches will have an effect on you for the rest of your life, and they can they can change your life, right? Oh, most definitely. Uh, like I said, one for Coach Robaugh, man. I, like I said, I probably wouldn't be here today. You know, he had a big impact on my life, so I'm I'm grateful for all that. You know, he wasn't even my coach, and he's had a big impact on mine too. You know, it's uh, it's so I don't doubt that it'll even a little bit. Uh, you know, of course, I wasn't as talented as you are either, but you know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, he was. Uh, it's funny, you know, when we got to hang around a lot. You know, we there at uh, Big Twelve Media Days, we got to hang around with Steven. A lot of fun stuff, man. It was uh, cool. I'm going to throw up a picture here that we got here. Uh, let's see. And uh, there we go. Check it out. Yeah, there we are there at the uh, – that was at the hotel there. Had to, had a drink, had to throw them horns down. This is a perfect of course, time. Always. Out, right? always. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, man, It's uh, it's been a great time in uh, – Talking a little bit about what you've seen from this defense, obviously, this year. I mean, last year, of course, you know, and that's the one thing I was saying about this whole stuff with, you know, every Texas show you watch, every every time you hear a Texas person talk, they're talking about 49 nothing. This ain't Lincoln Riley's team anymore. And I think that you can see that uh, in, in this, you know, they've kind of taken on Coach V's attitude that his you know his way of doing things you, you kind of see that kind of happening in front of our eyes have you have you noticed that yourself oh i noticed all of that and knowing coach b he's gonna have these guys ready for tomorrow just knowing yeah. him and um i mean the defense is playing great um like i said it takes a while for them to get to learn coach b system and they all playing fast they're not thinking as much like they did last year and yeah, they just playing. They playing football. They are playing very confident, and that's what they need to try to win this game. Yeah, hey man, and, and I think you're right. It's a. I think that that's the difference that you see. You know, you you see them out there. There's a toughness about them, right? You know that they're out there. Yeah. They want to make a big hit. They want to make a big play. Um, you know, you get a lot of the narrative too, and I think that this kind of plays into Oklahoma's hands. You might you tell me what you think here, but I I, I feel like it plays into OU's hands in the fact that. You've got everybody talking about, well, they haven't played nobody yet. They, they, you know, they're playing shitty football teams and all this kind of stuff. And it's, you know, maybe, but they've also done what they're supposed to do with every team that they play. You know, they've, they've covered the spread with everyone. I don't think they've been perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I was in Cincinnati. I would have liked to have seen them do be a little better that day uh, offensively, but defensively they were shut down. They were locked down in between, you know, they, they moved the ball a little bit between the thirties but Emory Jones is a running kind of quarterback that has been an Achilles heel for Oklahoma for years now, and he couldn't get anything going. You know, they turned him into a passer, and they shut it down. So, to me, this is a defense. You're starting to see things that even, you know, it was kind of false looking the first three games last year of what they looked like. And you thought, okay, well, they're getting better. But then, you know, they kind of fell back to earth getting into conference play. This is a different deal. You just see a new attitude kind of, don't you? Yes, the one key word about them, they are hungry. You can see it on the field, see how they're playing, and that they'll, they'll take them far. And when they play with their hunger, they want to prove everybody wrong, that becomes a dangerous team or a dangerous defense. So, like I said, Texans about to watch out. There's not going to yeah. be no rollo. There's not going to be no 49 nothing. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah. It will not be yeah. that. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. And I, and I mean, I think that you got uh what do you, what have you what do you think is the most impressive thing that you've seen out of them? What do you, what do you like the best out of the defense that you're seeing, you know, or what level, or is there something in particular that you think that they're really good at and what's something that maybe they need to do a little better? I think the secondary is playing pretty good. Um, yeah. they, they're not giving up the big play like they'd have been in the past. Um, I mean, they give up every now and then, but I mean, it's football. It happens, but they're on um, the secondary is playing very good. And I, one thing I want to see them get better, uh, I think the pass rush can get a little bit better. Just, right. just a tad bit better. They get into the quarterback, but they need to start finishing. 
Yeah, and, and I think a lot of that has to do, obviously, with a lot of Max Protect coming up. And now I was going to yeah. ask you, do you, think, do you see Texas doing that tomorrow where they have to get into Max Protect? I mean, obviously, they have a good offensive line. I think that's probably the strength of their team. But do you see them uh, having to do that? I don't think Texas is going to do that because they depend on no big five guys on the offensive front. I'm not going to lie. They're pretty good. Uh, they got no, a, lot they of five, a lot of five stars on their offensive line. So I don't think they'll match up protect as much. Um, but that's where oh, you got to take advantage of that. Those defensive guys got to beat their one-on-ones and get the sacks, put pressure in Quinn, you're, in Quinn's on face. You know? And that'll go a long way. Yeah. I think that's a lot that I've been saying too. It's, you know, I'd like to see, obviously, OU's, they need to get their offense running through. They need to get, they have to at least make them know that they're going to run the football. You know what I mean? Yes. I think that yes. if, you, if you're expecting the, 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 running, the running game to win the game for Oklahoma, I think that's a lot to expect from them. But the fact that they've got, they're so good with the receivers and you don't know who you're going to get from the, you know, who is, who's it going to be from week to week that's going to get you. But I really like the emergence of these young guys, the redshirt freshmen, and you know, uh, and then you, you know, we've talked a lot about these guys too. You know, with uh, Jaden, Jaden Gibson, and then you've also had, I mean, a, they're calling him Mister Anderson now. Nick Anderson is a stud, right? <laughs> yes, he is. Hey, just like his brother, man. When he played at OU, man, they some studs, man, and man, they start and they getting better athlete, and better every right? game. Yes. yes. Somebody was talking about seeing his dad after the game. They're like, man, that dude looks like he could be in the league right now. <laughs> oh, so, probably yeah. so. No, those jeans they got, they probably could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, do you think their tight end is fully capable, or is he just going to be – are you saying distraction or chicken, or are you saying more like a, you know eye candy type of deal? Oh, he's talking about uh, Jatavian Sanders. Yeah, Texas. Sanders. Dude's a stud, man. Man, that dude's a stud. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think he's a distraction at all. They're gonna use him to the full yeah. capability. Um, that's the one person we gotta put a key on. Make sure we somebody's on him, like a Billy Bowman or a Key Lawrence. Man, they gotta stay on him. Yeah, I think so too. I don't think you can let him get. And I don't. And obviously, I wouldn't see that happening. Right? They're not gonna. They're not gonna let him get get loose because if you do. You know whether he's hurt or not. You know he's probably better at seventy five percent than most of the most of the country. You know, you know there might be oh. there's, there's one other tight end in the country that's better. So that's it. <laughs> yes, that's true. Oh man, Bowers. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Brock Bowers is a freaking stud, right? That's Dude. a stud, man. Goodness. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is um question is um Harrington playing? Is he still hurt? Justin Harrison. He's out for the season, man. He's out for the he season. Is? I guess he uh yeah, I think he uh oh. tore up his knee pretty good. So that was announced, I think, last week. So he's definitely out. But it looks like and you know, really I was I was pretty excited about what you saw from Desan McCullough last week playing the cheetah. And uh and 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 I also think it's gonna make make sure that you see a lot more Peyton Bowen uh moving forward. You know, I mean they've played him at Cheetah a lot. Uh, I think the, so. You'll see him in a lot of cover situations and stuff like that. But seeing him blocking punts, I mean, he's already gotten two of them this year. You know, it sucks. It it, it does suck to see Justin Harrington go down. He was having a good a good season. He was definitely had done the thing. Yeah, ACL surgery is what we're talking about there for for uh, for Harrington. But yeah, you know, I, I think that I, I feel like that. that it's a situation where you're gonna grow these kids up pretty quick, and already you're starting to see some of these young guys come through, you know, early on. And I know that's, it's kind of, you don't really see it a ton, you know, at this level, particularly like PJ out of and then, uh, and then with uh, Peyton, but Peyton just looks like he belongs out there. You know, he does not need to come out the field. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Uh, he reminds me a lot of, um, a lot of Brodney pool when I was playing. He's always making a play. He's always around the ball. And that's somebody you need in that defense. And he's yeah. always going to make some type of play. It is a block punt or pass breakup or tip for an interception. You need those type of guys. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I would, I don't think we were necessarily saying you want to have him in on Jatavion Sanders. Uh, you know, yeah, Desan, a little bigger guy. You know, he's standing about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, so that's a little different than, you know, with Peyton. Um, but I think that, you know – uh yeah, I, I I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on Peyton though. I think that you definitely want to have him on the you gotta have him in. Uh 
And I think we kind of saw that in the spring game, you know, when he ran step for step with Andrew Anthony, one of the fastest guys in the country, and was able to, you know, not only run step for step with him, but then he turns his head and gets an interception on a deep ball that was pretty much a perfect throw. You know, not you don't see a lot of you don't see a lot of seniors making that play, much less freshmen. Uh, you know, true freshmen doing that. So it was it was big. I think that that's that's a a big deal. It's better version of Stephen Parker. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey man, he's uh, I think he's definitely proven why he was a five star plus guy. You know what I mean? He's one of those guys that that comes in and he's he's a game changer, no doubt about it. That's the biggest thing I've seen as far as what is going on with this thing is just the difference in in what they were a year ago. And I think, did you see that? You you know, we talked a lot uh, during Big Twelve Media Days about how it is to to play for Coach Venables. I mean, you know, he's just always, always, always on, right? You know, and and just always motivating, right? Oh, all the time, <laughs> twenty four hours, seven days a week. That's Coach. That's Coach V, man. Well, yeah. he's going to get the best out of you one way or another. So that's why these kids enjoy playing for him. Yeah, you know, and I, and I even heard, you know, I was watching on uh, one of those shows that they had a bunch of the defender the defender guys on there with them, talking to him about how he has these long talks after, after practices and stuff like that, that it's real long and winded. But all of them, they love him. Every, it seems like to a man, they all love him, the, love the dude, you know? It's just such a crazy thing, but they – He's hard on them in a way that Lincoln never was, right? Yes. But he gets the most out of guys, right? What is it about it? That, I mean, he'll make you want to run through a wall. I've heard that from so many guys. But what is it that? What is it about him that that you end up loving the guy so much? It goes for any coach. Um, he's a real coach. Like he's not going to sugarcoat anything. It's always one hundred percent. And players, they sense that if you're fake or if you're real. So players gonna respond better to real coaches. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the show, the coach, Philip Royball. Coach, coach, what's up? What's happening, guys? <laughs> we, listen, man. we catch you, we catch you How at a bad doing? time. We're doing good, man. We're just hanging out, good. talking a little, talking a little ball, Red River. Hey, my favorite sooner. <laughs> what's up, coach? <laughs> what what's up, my brother? Man, nothing much. We we just chopping it up over here, talking about Texas OU. Y'all gonna talking about how much we hate Texas, Burn Y'all gonna tear Texas's ass up, aren't you? That's the plan. <laughs> I, I believe it. I, I really do. And, and you know what? It some it somewhat hurts, Coach, that y'all are going to, not because I don't want you to, but because that's going to put a little more pressure on my team. Oh, mm. yeah. I yeah, do, yeah, yeah. But they got a tough one tomorrow hey, too. It coach. is what it is. It is what they, it is. They got a tough one tomorrow too, don't they? Ah, uh, yeah. I, I'm tired of that shit of listening to upset alerts. Three weeks in a damn row. Upset alert. Upset alert. Upset <laughs> alert. Take this shit and shove it up your ass on upset <laughs> alert. <laughs> I, I didn't say that. <laughs> I just said a tough game. I like. I like. No, uh, that's what I'm saying though. I, that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Well, I wasn't calling it an upset alert. I just said a tough out. No, I, 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 think, I agree with you. I, I agree, yeah. Jason, wholeheartedly. It's going to be a tough ball game. Hey, you know where I'm at, guys? Where are you at? Where? At? I'm I'm in the Texas Panhandle in a little town called Perryton, Texas, where I, I grew up. Right there, coach. It's my 45th reunion. Oh. And so uh, what well, that. Our, my my Perryton Rangers were winning 21 to 6 at halftime. So we came to our Airbnb for a little bit before we, we head back out. Well, cool deal, Coach. We appreciate you jumping on with us for a few minutes, man. And uh, I, I mean, uh, man, I've, I've, hell, I didn't realize that. Shoot, I'll tell you something. I just turned, yeah. I'll be turning 47 this year. So 45 year reunion? Damn. 45 years. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you were long. two years. You were two years old, brother, when I graduated. Oof. man! I probably, I, I probably wasn't even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve, it's awesome stuff, man. Well, and obviously, so, our, so, our, our, so, so I know I'm not going to be on here long. So I, I just want to hear y'all's thoughts on what the score will be tomorrow. Okay. All right, go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to, gonna give it to Stephen first. Uh, the score, mm, 
I'm going to go 35-31 OU. Okay. Okay. 35-31. I don't think that they're going to score that many points on us. I think Oklahoma has – they haven't given up a rushing touchdown all year, Coach. Uh, they, uh, and I know that they've got one of the better running backs in the country, but I tell you, I think that – it's going to be 28-17. I've been back and forth between 35 and 28, but I think it's going to be 28-17. They pull away towards the end, uh, and I think that they're going to shut Quinn Ewers down. So, okay, that's what I think it's going. I so, hope so. I really. What do you What do you got I, it at, Coach? Me, 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 and you're along the same lines. I think it's 28-21 OU. Okay. All right. And 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 guys, you know anybody that's listening tonight, baby, you understand this. I am no. OU fan, okay? <laughs> sure the only time not. I've ever been an OU fan is when Stephen Coleman played there. Uh, <laughs> but but I'm not an OU fan, but I, I try to keep it real, and I truly believe that OU will win the ball game tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. I think, I think OU's playing pretty damn good right now. I agree. They have a different attitude in, about them. That's opinion. what we were talking about the most. Is you just see a different attitude yeah. about them and, and the way they go about their business, you know? Well, in, in my honest opinion, I think they're slowly becoming somebody that could eventually, if, if the chips fall right, could be in that in that playoff. Yeah, I think they and, need to win. Like this, I said, I hate have a real chance with that. Right. But the, and, I, and I hate saying that because I think if, if OU, OU's in, I think Notre Dame's out. I think that all the, I think a lot of stuff would have to happen for Notre Dame to be out if they win out. I think a we'll lot see. of stuff would have to happen. I don't even see that. And that, that would be but, but you undefeated, know, undefeated team versus here, one loss team or something. I don't, I don't even think that's possible. Sure. But, you know, here's my question, Jason. Ha, you know, damn, keeping this pace of all the good football teams back to back to back to back, that's a lot of damn quarters you got to win. And and my question is, can we keep that pace? Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, the thing is, though, is I feel like, they got their loss there. It, it, we're going to find out a lot about Notre Dame, right? I mean, you're going to see a, a something real about them is because I think that they, you, you know, we talked about them a lot, that they play with so much. Um, they play with so physical, such a physical brand. Yeah. They run they run the football. I think they're going to make it hard on everybody. If they can, they can ugly a game up with anybody or they could go out there and score a ton of points on you. I don't think you can right. really – there's anything you can really do to run away from this football team. So they're going to be in a lot of close games. You would hope that they got I that BS crap out of the way with that, with the OSU loss. But I think exactly. that if anything, it should have, we're going to, you get to find out about them if, if whether or not they're going to crumble or, or step up after that. Cause it, it ought to have pissed well, them off. Right. And, and I agree with you, Jason, because you know, if they were to, if they were going to crumble, I think they might've crumbled last week when, mm -hmm. They were they had to take the ball ninety eight yards with two two minutes and thirty five seconds on the clock. Uh, they could have crumbled in. Yeah. Hey, hey yeah. coach, when did uh, when did they play USC? Next week. Is it uh, and I, um... I, I feel. I, I tell you what, Stephen. I I feel. I feel better about next week than I feel about this week. Because mm. USC. They suck oh. on defense. Soft, I, oh, I think soft as baby shit. I, I think we'll run through them like shit through a goose. <laughs> Me too. Oh, I like that. <laughs> they're so, hey, they're soft <laughs> as baby shit, man. Come on now. Oh, Lincoln <laughs> squad, screw them guys. Are y'all yeah. at home or are y'all at USC? Yes. Oh, uh, we got Louisville at Louisville, and then we got USC at home. Oh yes. Oh yes. Please win. Yeah. Please, Good please stuff. win. Yeah, me. That's that's me, brother. Oh, we got to we got to pick this one up tomorrow, and then and then we got to beat USC, and then I think you know we we I think we can win the next two. I think we're we're in in really good shape. Yeah, I agree. Heck yeah, man. But you know how football is, guys. Hell, you 
you, you can play somebody shitty and get beat. Well, speaking of playing somebody shitty and getting beat, right now Kansas State is down 20 to 7 on Oki Light. Wow. In Stillwater. Are so, you serious? Uh, shit, you know. That's crazy. <laughs> that Mike so, Gundy uh, magic. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Something. <sighs> Good grief. There's been a lot of, there's been some talk this week about they having a two year exit plan to bring in that, to bring in the, uh, D3 defensive coordinator that they brought in to make him head coach. Instead of going well, and finding a real coach, they're going to bring in the, I, I, the D3 I, I tell you what kind of plan. Like Loki Light. Exactly. I tell you what kind of plan they need to be on. They need to be like on a damn two-second plan. Fire his ass. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think He's that – I think, hey, look, man, I hope they keep him forever for if you want the truth of it, because you know, sure, sure. Be trash, so but, does everybody else. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're gonna be trash as long as he's there. But it, it, it again, I I don't know. It's just weird to me. I talked to Cody uh yesterday, the day before, and he was telling me about that. And I saw it on his show, so I thought I could bring it up. But I tell you, it's wow. a weird deal to me that that would be your the succession plan was to bring that clown up, you know. And yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying that he's a terrible coach or anything, I don't know the guy. But yeah. why him of all people? You know what I mean? There's other guys out there that you, you can, can you up. can have a hell of a lot better plan than that. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a that's weird. a horrible plan. Weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. don't go get a guy that's been proven as a head coach at a lower level like Jeff Trailer or you know Willie Fritz or somebody like that. Right. Let's go and get a guy that you know there's some yeah, great ones out there. Mike loves him. Mike loves him, so let's make him the head coach. He's he was at a D three last year and he wasn't the head coach there. But let's bring him on, you know. Stupid. Wow. Right. Yeah. Well, power to him. I I wish him all the worst. <laughs> Me too. Coach, <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you coming on, man. We'll let you get back to your ball game and stuff, but uh, we're glad you popped in here for a minute. Okay. Well, I I, I had to with Stephen being on here. I couldn't. Absolutely. I could not come on here. Yeah, and I remember yeah, that you, you know, were front of your head that way. What's that? I said I remember you told me you were headed out there to Parrington, so. You know, and of course, uh, folks, yeah. uh, Harrison's where they had a big tornado there last year, went through a lot of stuff. Coach has been talking about how uh, he's kind of helped lead the way with uh, rebuilding the town and everything. Prayers uh, continue to go out to those folks there in town. Sounds like everything is starting to get uh, better and everything. So I'm excited to hear that too, Coach. Well, and, and, and with that being said, Jason, let me just mention this and then I'll get off of here. But – you know, talking about trying to, to fundraise some money through our, our class of 78 here, we've had some, some very generous people in Hobbs that mm-hmm. have donated to me to, to get some some funding. Uh, wow. uh, Tom and Joanne Miller tonight just donated to me four Texas Tech tickets to the Texas Tech TCU ball game to raffle off. Uh, Mark Anderson uh, gave me a bolo tie uh, that he handmade that is beautiful that uh-huh. we're going to raffle off. And then my pretty bride uh, bought a, a, a purse or a bag. I shouldn't call it a purse. It's a bag that is is out of this world. So we'll raffle all three of those off last uh, tomorrow night. And then the last time my, my, we had a class reunion, we we brought in thirty thousand plus dollars, and so I think that's going to go probably to the people that were hit by the tornado here, which was uh, devastation here in Perryton. But but yeah. I want to thank those people uh, if anybody's on here listening. And by the way, guys, just one last thing: I walked in to my to my reunion, and a guy that I played football with, Jamie Jackson. He's sitting uh-huh. there and he says, you know, I watch y'all's po- podcast. Uh, really? Which was so cool. So That cool. is super cool, man. Well, tell him we said hello, and we, we're happy, that, uh, happy to have everybody on there. Gerald Talley says to tell you hello as well. I don't know who he is, but he said he knows you. Hey, tell Talley horns down, baby. He's a, <laughs> he's a Texas fan. Yeah, hey, he's been no, here. I love Gerald he's Talley. He's to start with this is Texas. All the Texas stuff. So I wasn't. I almost didn't even say anything to you because of it, Gerald. So, <laughs> hey, Gerald. Gerald's a great guy, man. I, I yeah, as yeah. a matter of fact, I coached his his son in T-ball. Really, uh, great, great guy, great family. 
The only thing bad about him is he's a Longhorn fan. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah, love you, man. Not, nobody's perfect, man, but, you know. That's right. Is. Yeah. Hey, All love right, you man. guys. Y'all have a great you, night. I hope y'all have a great game tomorrow. Horns down. Let me let's see if I can get it in. There it Always. is. Horns down, baby. Love you Appreciate guys. Appreciate it, Coach. Love you, man. Late, later. Later. Bye, Coach. All right. That was the coach. Hey, Gerald. No, thanks for coming in and watching the show with us. Uh, uh, you know, not everybody is perfect, but we're happy uh, that you're checking us out in here. And uh, coach says hello, too. Yeah, let's see. Uh, how bad does USC lose to Notre Dame? Hey, uh, mm. I think that I think Notre Dame gets the shit out of them. I don't I don't see it particularly close because if you look at what CU really is, in a, and as much as I like Coach Prime, I think he's headed in the right direction. They really need that in the trenches stuff. Yes. But I, I mean, hey, they've got Bear Alexander at freaking USC and still damn near lost the damn game. In fact, if, if CU had any kind of urgency going down the field on those last couple of drives, you know, not taking 30 or 40 seconds to freaking snap the ball, I think they win. You know? Yeah, they, yeah, they would. Um, yeah, Bear Alexander, oh, man, he's a surprise to me. I think he'll probably be a difference maker. And yeah, my, you look at the stats, he's really not doing anything. So I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with him. It's just such a weird, the, the weird way that they do it. But I, to me, and a lot of it has to do with this. It, it, as much as everybody loves to blame Alex Grinch for it, and I don't think he's good. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's good. But I got to tell you, this is, I think the guy is there to take bullets for freaking Lincoln Riley because Lincoln doesn't doesn't do anything to help him out. You know, he's held that whole freaking time that comeback was going on. They didn't run the ball one freaking time after the third quarter. And they've got well, like know, the number two ranked PFF running back in the country too. But you know what's funny about that? I saw that coming because all our OU fans, we saw that the last five years Lincoln was there. Like we get no certain games and he would just stop running the ball. And now the USC fans are seeing what we saw. <laughs> No, I know. And, you know, that's the whole thing. You get those USC fans that have been, you know, they'll they'll come on and they'll hear us talking shit and they'll be mad about it. But, oh, wow. you know, you guys are just haters and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, sour grapes because he's gone. There ain't a damn per. There's not an OU fan out there that is unhappy that Lincoln Riley is gone. Guaranteed. Uh, we, try we try to help them out. <laughs> straight up. Straight up. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. just kind of been where it's at. There's not, but there's not a single OU there's not a single OU fan that isn't happy that, that, you know, at least at this point, I would say that isn't happy about him being gone. And if, if they are out there, I wouldn't, I don't understand it. Um, you can think what you want to think about Jeff Levy or whatever. And I know a lot of people have their opinions about him. I don't have a problem with Jeff Levy. We don't do that shooting shots at him deal here, but, and, and we don't do it with Dylan either. The thing is, is they got handed that shit sandwich from Lincoln and they've made, Something out of it this quick, you know, they're recruiting. I mean, look at this recruiting class they're about to bring in with Stoney, Nigel Smith. You know, uh, they just got uh, Danny Okoye here in the last couple of weeks as well. They got, uh, I mean, just uh, they've got, what, five already blue chip defensive line prospects between edge rushing and the DT spot with Stoney obviously being just man among boys and, and same with Nigel. I think that Nigel's underrated, very underrated. Yeah. Yes, and Coach V knows what it takes to win a national championship. I mean, he went up against Bama for like three straight years, so he knows what it takes. He needs those guys in the trenches, <laughs> those four or five star guys, those big bodies to compete in the SEC. So he knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, how excited are you about that? How excited are you about the SEC move? I love it. Um, I think it's another challenge for us um, to see how good we can be. Um, it's good for OU, good for Texas. Uh, it makes SEC even better. Um, yeah. I think we'll be okay. We'll be okay in the SEC, I think. I think so, too. And they're, of course, expanding the playoffs. So I think all you got to do is, you know, Coop, That's uh, he comes on our show from Unfair Sports sometimes, and he was talking about how the, the cool thing about it with it was, you know, he didn't really care about winning the SEC championship so much because all you got to do is be up there in that top two or three, and you're going to get in the playoff now. Yep. And you know, I can see you can see some real freaking fist fights going on, you know, in the SEC over the next few years between those four or five main teams of being, you know, well, with Texas, LSU, Bama, and Georgia, of course, 
And then, you know, you're going to see teams like I think Florida is – Florida will never be okay with not being good. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I think that they may be a year or two out from, from really getting there, but they're not ever going to be okay with not being good. So you're always going to have probably six or seven – really good football teams that are that are going to contend for it anyway uh, i just think that you know the sec definitely got better with it as well you know what i mean i think that a lot of people the people with the the narrative that oh you and texas are going to suck in the in the sec are they're not paying attention you know this i mean, I mean if you want to be honest um when missouri and texas and am first got in i mean missouri went to the sec championship game twice and and they'll beat alabama so i mean yeah. you can say what you want i mean sec is not Invincible as everybody thinks, they're not. They're not. No, it's a lot of good marketing. A lot of good marketing, and it, it's a good league. You know, it's a good league. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. Yeah, yeah. and the, but to think that oh, you and let's just say that if Coach Venables didn't work out and didn't win, which I don't. Obviously, we see what he's doing recruiting wise. If you get the guys, they're going to win. You know, they're going to yeah. they're going to win football games, and you can see that. Yeah, he obviously has to learn how to be a head coach a little bit, but I think he's shown leaps and bounds from year one to year two. But yeah. to me, at no point would would the people at Oklahoma be okay with middle of the road in any league, any conference. No, no, no that's not that's non-existent in Norman. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, we can't we can't <laughs> fathom that thought. No, not at all. Yeah. There it <laughs> is. Oh, um, I, I know somebody asked a question about what's a pregame like for uh, Coach V. Do tell us. Do tell us, man. Oh, uh, pregame with Coach V. It's a lot of intense intensity, a lot of going around, making sure everything is straight. Uh, make sure everybody know their keys, everybody know their roles, and um, just last minute checks. Really, uh, it's nothing too crazy as everybody would think. To be honest, it's really not. No, I mean he's kind of gotten that all out of the way during the week. Or during what? the week, yeah, exactly. Yeah, in practice, practice is totally different. It's a, it's a different storm <laughs> doing practice. <laughs> it's, it's so different, yeah. But yeah, doing pregame, no, it's more you know just you know going over our assignments and everything. So not what right. everybody would think, <clears throat> right? Well, what tell us about the practice though? I mean, it's just it's relentless, right? It's relentless. Oh, it's relentless. It's a lot of reloads, and oh man, it's yelling it right. at the line, yelling at the linebackers. I know with Curtis and <laughs> I know Lewis Baker and oh those guys. Well, they was getting it, man, in practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He don't mess around. He don't mess around. It's pretty funny, right? Yeah, but it makes funny. us play. It makes us play better on Saturday. So I, you know, I can't judge at all. What do you what and what about his what about his game time demeanor, man? What is it, you know, the get back coach and all that stuff? And there's been a couple of times that the get back mm-hmm. coach has been missing, or I don't know if they got one or what's going on, but they've had these sideline issues the last couple of weeks. So Yeah, this is oh, cause last year he wasn't really out there like that, like he's been in the past, to be honest. Yeah. Things kind of calmed down a little bit. <laughs> you know something, but I thought that and I think that may have had something to do. Um it's good that oh you didn't play Georgia this year. It's good for for good for Georgia, Shawty. Oh man, that that would have been good to be honest. The way Georgia's playing. This is our boy uh, Shawty Parker. He actually played for UGA. Uh, he was a receiver for UGA, so he's just talking uh, shit. Uh, what's up, Shawty man? How you doing, bro? <laughs> this is our boy Stephen Coleman. Shawty, uh, he played at OU defensive tackle uh, during the during the Gerald McCoy, Tommy Harris year. So. Uh, how many sacks did you end up with in that game? I thought that picture of you earlier, bro. What is that? How many sacks did you end up with in that game? Because it looks uh, like it you just, got it twice. No, nah, I was just that one sack. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I got. I found sack. another picture of that of that one uh, that you that you sent. Then and um, where is that? Let me pull that up. So you you put a, put a pretty good hit on him, and then you rolled him up. Yeah, what that was, was a uh, it was a screenplay and um. I know uh, the back end, they pretty much sniffed out the screen, so he just kept holding on to the ball. So I was like, well, I'm going to go get this sack, man. He's going to keep holding on to the ball. So that's that's <laughs> how that turned out to be. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, shoot, man. And so was that one of the ones that you guys got the win in? Was that game? No, nah, actually, we lost that game. Okay. Yeah, we lost uh, that Here game. he is. He got him down on it. Oh, yeah. Big number 90. Oh. 
Oh, Colt McCoy. Uh, <laughs> Colt McCoy. Mm-hmm. Still yep. in the league. Yeah, right. Hey, what a as long as he's hung around the league, and I didn't I mean he was good. He was pretty good, man. You gotta get he him was. Pretty, pretty he good. was. Even um Chase Daniel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. Too. It's but it's it's still one of them. And then here's one of uh we have the one of Gerald McCoy. You know, it was funny last week they were talking about Gerald went two and three against him or, or one and two against him, I guess, in his time. And uh they but they were talking about that and he was they were talking shit about it on Twitter and, and Gerald's like and I said, Hey man, he had his foot up a Texas ass <laughs> the whole time he was at Oklahoma. And, and Gerald re- replied back, he goes, To the knee. <laughs> to the knee. <laughs> oh, that's that's GK for you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was good stuff. Yeah, everybody doubting LU because of last season. Yeah, for real, for real. Yeah, no, you're not wrong, Shardy. I think you're not wrong there. And, uh, and you know, here's the thing. I, I feel like the main thing that, that we've seen out of this Oklahoma team, we, we do need to see more. We know that. And I think that as a, as a team, you know that. But I think that what I've noticed about all the talk that's going around about this game and this is just, you know, and you guys know this is the, as former players in, in Division One football and, and a big time Division One football. Talk don't mean, and that that damn Alabama game don't mean shit tomorrow. If they don't get to carry those points into the into the Cotton Bowl with them, mm-hmm. they don't. And it doesn't matter that they beat Alabama once they get to the Cotton Bowl either. You got to come out there and do that again from start to finish to beat this football team because they're not going to go away. They're not going to exactly. go away. This exactly. defense is going to be in his face all damn day. They're going to have learned things from that Alabama game about how to beat them too, I think. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, that's how it's going to be next year when they go to the SEC, man. Every game is going to be different. It's, it's not going to be, you know, just a cupcake game every single day. It's going to be True that. Like, you know. Yeah, a lot of people have been calling OU. So that's funny stuff. They, they, they were soft. They were soft under Lincoln. They're not yeah. like that anymore. This is not a soft football team. That, that was one thing that you can see the difference. And that's why 49-0 didn't matter. If it did anything, it, it it poisoned the well in freaking Austin. That's what I would think. If you if you if, because of people the people that think forty nine zero matters to anyone, other than yeah, it's probably being used as a, you know, something to pump up your team. And as you know, as a coach, you know, whenever you get something like that, that's a gift for you to be able to freaking use that. schmidty has been using, you know, they're doing forty nine reps of this and that, and forty nine reps of, of that. You know what I mean? It's just stuff that they're doing. Just to keep that in your head, they're probably so sick of that number. But I mean, that's that's motivation right there, right? Yeah. From some sources I've already heard from from the whole week, these guys are pissed. <laughs> the whole yeah. team is pissed. They tired of everybody disrespecting them. They tired of thinking they're gonna lose. And yeah, they they pissed right now. There we go. A lot of people praising the Texas trenches. They should praise the Texas ten- trenches, Sooner Cowboys. They should. They're good. They're good there, both sides, you know. But so is Oklahoma. This is the difference. It's no longer is this a, you know, you're going to go up against somebody that's just going to completely outman you. That's just not going to be the way that it is anymore. You know, it, it's just how it is. So I, I think that I think that this is a good opportunity for Oklahoma to do it. Um, you know, do you think – Let the one other question that I had for you, do you feel like that the, they've been vanilla with their play calls on the defensive side as far as, like, the looks that they've given? You think they're going to throw some more exotic ways to kind of get to, to Quinn a little bit tomorrow? You think he's left some stuff up his sleeve? I think this would be the perfect game to go ahead and do it. I mean, if they have been yeah. vanilla. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of things they can do to disrupt Quinn and his throwing and uh, everything, but I'm pretty sure it will be some surprises tomorrow yeah yeah i hope so <laughs> me too man me too yeah i was ready i just i stopped watching that damn game last year real early so uh yeah maybe uh ready? pay ball can do a superman 2 <laughs> second hey. version superman 2 would be sweet right <laughs> that would be awesome man yeah and uh then obviously tell us what you were talking you were saying off of the air about uh danny stutzman and what you what he's what you've seen out of him man he's playing like all american this year i mean Everybody sees it from the announcers to 
we just turned on the uh, game. You see him making a play somehow, some way. Yeah, he's just there. Yeah. So as far as he goes, he as long as he's playing great, defense plays great. Right. Right. Uh yeah. I think I think that uh there's no two ways around it. And, I, and what you heard from Coach V this week was like, you know, and I think you've heard it from a different a couple of different places. Is like Coach Vin was hard on him last year, man. Hard on him. And he needed to have that. Because there was times that he was playing undisciplined, wrong gap. He wasn't paying attention. And he was like, look, there's more to being a, a, a leader than just being the funny guy on the team. You know, are you going to step up and do something or not? And apparently Teddy's taking him under his wing as well. You know, so that's been a big thing. But I think that, you know, he took it upon himself. He, Coach V talked about this week of making sure the linebackers got together, making sure they knew what they were doing. You know, he's really taking on the leadership role. And, you, you know, leadership is something that kind of comes from within, isn't it? Yes, and I mean, just think of all the linebackers that Coach V coach. You go from Rocky to Teddy to Rufus to Curtis Lawton. I mean, he's been hard on all those guys, and they end up becoming all Americans. And so that's, that's he sees something in Danny that you know Danny probably don't see at the beginning, but now he do. So that's mm -hmm. a good thing. Yeah, Shardy, and I would tell you the depth. I mean, here's the thing you got to say about this Oklahoma defense. I'm gonna and guys, I will have my final. Uh, preview coming out uh, in the morning. Uh, I'm going to leave it for in the morning so everybody can check it out there. Um, but look, the main thing I would say about that, about the depth on, the, I mean, they've been, coach is talking about that, 30 different guys on the defense. They basically have three that are coming in and out of the game at all times, mm -hmm. at damn near every position. And they're not seeing a huge drop off. They're the number number four scoring defense in the country. They are number, I think they're top 15 in tackles for loss. And this is without getting a ton of sacks. They lead this, they lead the country in interceptions. Uh, and then and they're like they're top two in takeaways, period. This is a team that, that they can get out there and get it done on the defensive side. Now, as far as what you asked about in here, which team is built better to come from behind, I don't think that there's any doubt that it's Oklahoma. Oklahoma has you've got three, three guys that you got to really worry about as far as uh, receiving core there at Texas. And they're good as they get. Don't get me wrong. You know, they're as good as it with A.D. Mitchell. And obviously, you know, you know, coming in from, from Georgia, they got really good there. But there's six, seven guys in the receiving core that can hurt you for OU. And so if they lock down, if they lock down, you know, Andrew Anthony or Jaleel Farouk, then you got to deal with Jaden Gibson. And, and you got to do it, you know, and now we're talking about the big guys that are going to come in and do what they do, right? So to me, this is an offense that's a lot more explosive than is the Texas offense, although the offense of Texas is really good. I think explosive-wise, but if you got to throw and, and come back, I think that that's obviously a – I think that that's – they're going to be better there if they had to come from behind. So that would be my answer to that question. Yeah, and I agree with um some of the Cowboys. Like our DTs do need to step up. Um, they haven't yeah. been pretty quiet all year, so we get at least one guy to step up. They'll help out a lot. Yeah, and I think that that's that's kind of been the the, <clears throat> the deal for for really the since he got here. You know, it's it's a matter of that's always been where you have those issues, right? You got to step up and get some pressure, cause some pressure. I think you're getting more than what than what we've seen in the past, and I think that they're doing better. But yeah, it's. It's still the work in progress, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. He'll get there. Yeah, I think we see Petaway. See, again, there's a guy I wasn't even really thinking about right now. You know, true freshman. Yeah. But, yeah, leave him open. Yeah, leave him oh, open. Yeah. See how that goes. Please right? do, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? Please do. Yeah. Thompson, you know, came over from Texas. He's a 10-1 freaking 100 guy. Leave him open. They were like, oh, he was number eight on our depth chart. Who gives a shit? <laughs> you gonna you gonna not guard him if he gets on the field? <laughs> Man, I totally forgot about him because he had that big catch last week. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the couple hey, of catches last week, right? Hey, this might be a game where he's like, yeah, I was at Texas, but <laughs> I'm here now, so you never know. <laughs> you never know. Hey, man, you never know, man. There's and that, again, and that's not even. I mean, Drake is doing a great job as like the security blanket for for Dylan. Uh, you know. We hadn't really seen a lot of G Freaky lately, guys. We haven't, but you're gonna tell that's another dude that's got wheels, you know. And if you let him get into the secondary, he's gonna run out of your life. 
Andrew Anthony has been big time in the college football playoff two years in a row. He's caught multiple touchdowns in the college football playoff. He will run out of your life. Jaleel Farouk may have the most shiftiness of all of them. Great player. I mean, the, it just, the list goes on, guys. The list goes on on that receiving core. And to the point that I'm at the point where I don't really care about the tight end right now. If he's not coming through at this point, let's put another receiver on the field and let's go. Yes, I agree. My only concern about OU right now is the offensive line. They have been kind It hadn't of been great, right? It hadn't been they great. Have, they haven't been great. And you really don't need those big guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I would say about that is that I do feel like they're in a situation where Bill Beatonbo is the dude, bro. He's the dude. Yeah, he is. Coaching those yeah. guys up, you know? And I don't, I just think they hadn't really found the right, because the offensive line, they get judged by kind of what they do together, right? You know what I yeah. mean? It's, it's a whole unit more than it's just a guy. Because Tyler Guyton, I think, is probably the best guy on either mm. offensive line. Yeah. But the offensive line isn't the be- isn't better than uh, we said before that they definitely have the they definitely have the advantage when it comes to offensive line play. Mm-hmm. But I do think that I do think that uh, if they can find the right little mix, and maybe they find something in this game, you know, to get it done, they have kept Dylan pretty clean. At least yeah, I mean, yeah. that's one thing they've passed blocked pretty well. You want to see the run game get a little better, but. Again, I don't know that the I don't think that Texas's run game is that much better. They had a 300 yard game last week, and that's why they went ahead of Oklahoma in run in run performance. So it's it's not like it's been that big of a deal. Yeah, I agree. So that I think that'd be the key matchup is our O line against Texas D line. If we can um sustain what they bring, then we'll yeah. we'll we'll be good for the win. But if they have trouble protecting Dylan, then it might be a long day. So. I'm looking at it from both sides. <laughs> it could, and it could, and that's the, and I think that that would be, you know, when we, I'm going to get into to my uh, preview in the morning, but yeah, I think you're right, man. I think you're right, and I, that's why I wanted to bring you in here of, of what you see as somebody who's been there, and it's yeah, I think that this is definitely a team that you can't afford, and, and I mean, if you saw, if there's anything that you would take from last year's game is that you know that this is a team that can explode right now. You know, they they have those dudes at every position. That you know, if you let them get some, you know, if you if you let Quinn have a clean pocket, and you let you know, you let them run the football between the tackles, it could be a long damn day, yes, right? It could. it could be a long damn day. So, you know, I, I do feel like we're in a situation where it's probably I, I see Oklahoma winning, but I definitely see it being a tough game either way, and, and it wouldn't. Would it surprise you if it was a close game and they lost? Probably not. You know, they're not going to run out of their life like they did last year. That's for sure. And uh, so there it is. Yeah, it could be. You can go either way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the last time Texas started doing a bunch of all that shit talking before the game and intimidation and stuff, that backfired on them, though. Right? Oh, so, oh man. Do- it all comes down who who plays what on the field. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, you can run that mouth all you want before the game. It generally don't work out too good. <laughs> no, not at all. Yep. Yeah, I Let's do see. agree. Uh, Andrew Rame has been playing good. He has Me been too, playing man. good. I like, again, there's a lot of these guys that, you know, and again, they're they're able to keep all these dudes fresh. And I think that this is going to come down to that towards the end is if you can keep these guys fresh along that defensive line, and I think that's why they've been so strong in the second half of these games that if they are giving up anything, it's generally been early. You know, if you're going to get anything on this team, you're going to get it early. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to generally get it late. So, you know, you've had two games that they've pitched shutouts. Last week, you know, obviously you don't like that. You saw the couple of missed, you know, and that was just kind of key looking in the back in the backfield. Didn't keep his eye, his eye uh, eyes where they needed to be. And th- that first one, you know, that first touchdown, I said it on my, on my post-game stuff that, I mean, he was looking for a pick six after they just got one. You know, they're smelling blood in the water. You could understand how it happened. Mm-hmm. You just know yeah. it can't happen anymore. You want to see – I want to see Reggie Pearson put a hit on somebody or him put a hit on somebody right there. Think about coming back across the middle, bro. You know what I mean? You know, make them make them pay for that piece of land. Yeah, that reminds me of um, the 2003 matchup when – I think it was like the third or fourth play of the game when Derek Strait got that pick. <clears throat> And he ran it back. 
It's kind of kind of like that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at that. Hey, and you know it's always good. This game comes down to a play like that, a takeaway, uh, you know, uh, something on special teams, which obviously our punt game has been shitty, but something special teams or, you know, to have a, to have a big play where you can force a turnover and, you know, maybe a pick six or something like that. You know how these things can hinge on things like that. So I like the way. Yeah. yeah we don't give up gimmies in the second half. That's what I just said. Yeah. Uh, they don't give up hardly anything in the second half. You know, they, as bad as they looked against Iowa state in those couple of plays and allowing that first 20 minutes, they let them score 20 points, and then they didn't – and they had almost 300 yards in that first 20 minutes, and then they had under 100 and no points for the next 40. Yeah, they're doing good of making adjustments, so that's been really key this whole season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I think we ain't see much of OU's best running back, Javante. I agree with that. Well, Javante's been hurt, man. He had that, yeah. that surgery in the offseason. I just don't think he's really recovered for him. You know? Yeah. Um, it, I would hope that he's better, um, but I think I, th- I think that, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. But, yeah, who's the better coach? They're both new. Hey, hey, hey first off, Sark isn't new. This is his 10th year, and he's never won 10 games, Shardy. It's ain't, it, he ain't new. He don't get that excuse no more. Who's the better coach? I, th- I think it's Coach V, but, I mean, that's that's me. We got to get Shardy on her, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, he yes. comes on the show a lot, actually. So, hey, yeah. you know, you're welcome to come on the show anytime. So, what? How do? You, what do your Tuesdays usually look like? And we usually do Tuesdays, Thursdays, sometimes. And you know what? If you want to come on, I I can check with Coach. You come on the Snap Count tomorrow night. We usually go on on uh, the Saturday night Snap Count. We kind of break down the the rest of the day. Um, okay. But but if you want to jump on, Shadi, if you want to jump on with us. Um, tomorrow I'm going to go live after the game. If you want to jump in with us again, uh, come Steven and talk about it a little bit and kind of that way you can break down what you saw of the game. You know, you jump on there and shot You're welcome to pop in there as well. What time does Georgia play tomorrow? Let me mm, check this course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I always go on their Saturday night snap count. It's, it's at, uh, what is that? 10 Eastern. So, um, you know, you it'd be nine o'clock your time if you want to jump on with us. I'm sure, Coach, I'd be happy to have you on. Uh, oh, we yeah. can talk about the day's games and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah just let me know. Yes, yes, indeed. What's up, Tristan? How you doing? You'll do what? You'll do what? You'll jump on, or what do you do? What am I missing here? As a head coach, uh, as a head coach, I think okay, they're at eight. Okay, so they're uh, 7 o'clock, 10. Okay, so you, it'll still be going on during that time. Okay, cool. So you can jump on with us then afterwards? Okay. Yeah, who they, who are they playing? Uh, they are – who do they got tomorrow? It's uh, – oh, Kentucky. It's a big game for them. Oh, tomorrow. yeah, I forgot. Yeah, 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 Kentucky game. Yeah, yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, Tristan, you're welcome to jump on, man. Um, let's see. Well, uh, we're going to do it right after the game tomorrow. So uh, jump in there. You're welcome to jump on with us. That's Unk right there, guys. Unk talking about jumping in with us. I love it. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's um, good, man. Yeah, heck yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. But, hey, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I appreciate you coming in tonight. I will send you the link for tomorrow for after the game. Um, we'll. Uh, I'll make sure to tell you a, an actual time. But, I mean, just figure like 30 minutes after the game. Maybe, maybe we may go an hour after the game. Give her every time okay, to get ready and kind of kind of do some breakdown stuff. But yeah, love to have you on to kind of break down what you saw in the game, the keys to victory, stuff like that. Hey, right. folks, Stephen Coleman, former Oklahoma Sooner, he's been in this game before. Excited about it, about having him uh, talk to us a little bit about it as well. Stephen, thanks a lot for joining us, man. And thanks for having me. And shout out to everybody that joined on, man. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Make sure you folks wiped your feet before you came in here. And if you didn't, make sure you hit that like button on the way out. That is so important for us as a channel to continue growing. Uh, we appreciate everybody that did. And heck yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get uh, I'll get everybody some links out there. Uh, Tristan, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll throw that out there to Chris and because uh, I'm sure he'll be ready to hop on there too as well. But I'll throw that link out there. You can get it from him. 
or if you want to hit me up on Twitter, it's uh, at JW underscore HOF, and uh, I'll shoot it to you in there as well. You're welcome to hop on anytime, man. Uh, we'd love to have you. So, uh, yeah, guys, thanks a lot, everybody, for coming in. We will, uh, hey, Boomer Sooner, look for my preview tomorrow morning. Uh, it's it's done and ready to rock and roll, but uh, it's going to release in the morning uh, at about, it'll be 5 o'clock central, or no, 7 o'clock central time, 6 o'clock where I'm at right now. Steven, good to see you, buddy. I appreciate you. We will, and guys, horns down, as always, Boomer Sooner. Yes, indeed. We'll see you on the next one.